mathematician called Kurt Gödel and he investigated formal mathematical systems and formal mathematical systems are interesting in the sense that you can have very simple formal systems like Boolean logic for example which are not all that complicated have a few simple rules and you can do quite a lot with them all together but they have their limitations what Kurt Gödel found was that if a mathematical system gets complete enough it can actually be used to describe itself and that is where it gets very interesting because people thought at the time that if a mathematical system can be used to describe itself then it should be possible for any statement in that system to use the mathematical system itself to investigate it and to establish whether that statement was true or false. What Kurt Gödel found was that that is not true. He found that if a mathematical system is complete enough and consistent enough, or complete and consistent, there will always be statements that cannot be derived that way. There are statements it is possible to have a statement of which it would be impossible, literally impossible, to establish whether that statement is true or false. The only way out of the dilemma is to arbitrarily decide for, this, for the statement to be true or false, thus arriving at a bigger system. But that bigger system suffers from the exact same problem. There's no way out. There's never, it's never possible to arrive at a consistent system that's complete and in which everything can be established as true or false. That's one thing. Secondly, the laws of nature are, have very interesting forms and usually typical laws of nature as we've uh, discovered them or as we've come close to establishing what exactly they are for example Newton's laws of physics of motion are very simple deterministic laws and yet look at a simple one of the most simple systems three billiard balls collect, colliding with each other or a system of planets consisting of three heavenly bodies revolving around each other and it has been proven that it is mathematically impossible to solve those equations. It is mathematically impossible, not due to computational power issues, no, actually impossible. The more computational power you throw at it, the more accurate your calculation is going to be but it's never going to be absolutely correct. Isn't that bizarre? You can never, even the simplest physical systems, and knowing the laws of physics 100%, you cannot actually predict what that system is going to do in the long run. In principle, it is mathematically impossible. Another idea is that, hang on a second, maybe, a system of um, physics, the nature, behaves like a cellular automaton in which there are discrete little entities, individual cells at an incredibly small level, granted in our uh, reality, but still each of which uh, behaves according to a very simple set of rules and it is therefore completely deterministic. Is that maybe completely predictable? No. Because again, with cellular automatons, it has been shown that given enough room, 
a big enough grid, so to speak, on which the uh, automata exist, and given uh, enough interactive rules, a cellular, a cellular automaton becomes, can become a universal Turing machine which is basically means that it becomes a computer. It can calculate anything you want it to calculate based on input and it creates output. And again, we hit the very same problem again with universal Turing machines. There are things that are not computable in universal Turing machines. It's in principle impossible to solve every problem with a universal Turing machine. What does all that mean with regard to free will?